I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Anvil Hurricane, and we're starting right now. Anvil Aerospace, all systems online. Special thanks to all the support from patrons and channel members. It takes a while to make one of these and your support is appreciated. Welcome to a Star Citizens Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Anvil Hurricane. We'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and give you my thoughts on the Hurricane. Be sure to check out my loadout guide for the Anvil Hurricane in the info card above and on the end screen. I'm live on Twitch right now. Head over and give me your thoughts on the hurricane. I'll be building my loadout for the Anvil Hawk. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Anvil A4A Hurricane is a fighting spacecraft that packs a deadly punch into a light fuselage. The spaceship compensates for its lack of creature comforts with its powerful armament. Two size four and four size three turret mounted guns capable of blasting their way through nearly anything. Hurricane pilots have yet to find an enemy that they can't knock down. The Hurricane is fast but not nimble, and it is designed to charge into threatened areas before rushing back out to regroup. It's a close to mid-range ship similar to the Gladius. It is designed to work with other fighters and support ships rather than long-range patrols. A small power plant, zero cargo space, and weak shields and hull emphasize its role as a fragile attack ship relying on the raw speed of its engine and the hull-busting power of its guns to protect itself. Anvil Aerospace is a human spacecraft manufacturing corporation founded in 2772 that produces both military and civilian crafts. The F-7 Hornet and F-8 Lightning are among Anvil spacecrafts currently produced for all branches of the United Empire of Earth military. Since the foundation of the company, all final designs of the spacecrafts must be approved by the CEO. They are headquartered on Terra. As of today, the Hurricane is not available for sale or upgrade on the Pledge Store, but when it does, it sells for $170 for a very limited time. It is available as a loaner for Ares Ion and Inferno owners, and for owning one, you'll receive a Super Hornet as a loaner for Arena Commander. I can confirm that the Super Hornet loaner is also available in the Persistent Universe, and the Hurricane is available for purchase in-game for just over $1.2 million off of UEC. Now that you know a little bit more about the Anvil Hurricane, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. On the nose, you can see the gimbaled size 3 ballistic scatter guns. These can be replaced with fixed size 4 weapons if you wish. There are a couple of things I don't like, the chroma key landing gear and the red accent color, but maybe a purchasable skin in game can fix this at a later date. The good thing is it can't really be seen while you're flying in most third person shots. Tucked inside the wings, we have two size 2 missile racks with one size 2 missile each. I'm not sure why we didn't get one size 3 missile rack so we could have the option of using one size 3 missile instead, but it looks intentional. Up top, you can see there are four, that's right, four size 3 weapons on the turret. I'm a huge fan of the anvil wingtip hooks. Around the rear, you can see its dual main thrusters that help it achieve that well over 1200 meter top speed. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's hop inside the turret seat. It comes with four MFDs and a 2D radar. It doesn't appear to have an ejection feature. The new turret HUD is a well-needed update. Let's head inside the pilot's cockpit. It does have the new building blocks UI, though I think I can stop saying that now. Its enunciator panels are located on the top port side of the cockpit. It has a hollow radar and four MFDs. The pilot certainly has an ejection feature. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, a heavy fighter, some medium fighters, and some multi-crew combat ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Anvil Hurricane weighs in at over 86,000 kilograms and takes sixth place. It fits in at 22 meters in length and takes second place. 
It totes zero SCU of cargo, as well as most other ships on this list. It has a max crew size of two and ties in third place with most of the ships on this list. It carries 583 quantum fuel units. It ties in last place with most of the ships compared. It cruises by with an SEM speed of 198 meters per second and takes third place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1232 meters per second and takes second place. It has a maximum pitch rate of 55 degrees per second and ties in seventh place with the Super Hornet. It has a maximum yaw rate of 50 degrees per second and ties in eighth place with the Super Hornet again. And it has a maximum roll rate of 135 degrees per second and takes third place. It has a total hull HP of almost 5,500. This is a true glass cannon, my friends. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 4% and ties in second place. It has an energy armor damage reduction of 10% and ties in first place with five other ships compared. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%. The only ships on this list with stealth reductions are the Sabre and Prowler. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of over 2400, but before you get your panties in a bunch, it comes equipped with short range high DPS ballistic scatter guns. It shoots its way through with the default turret DPS of almost 1400. It takes first place of course and is well deserved. It has a stock missile payload of almost 15,000 and it ties in 8th place with the Banu Defender. And the Hurricane is available for sale in-game for over 1.2 million Alpha UEC and takes the number one spot. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. It will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are, as far as metrics are concerned, compared to most ships this size, it has a ton of firepower. It has excellent acceleration and top speed. It's one of the few ships with physical and energy reduction armor. The pilot weapon range potential is great due to its size for hardpoints. EF series repeaters can hit out to 4,000 meters. This kind of goes without being said, but the turret DPS is outmatched. And overall, for such a small ship, its DPS is again outclassed. I don't think I've mentioned this for a pro or a con, but 1.2 million Alpha UEC is a steal. Or if you purchase this on the pledge store, you get an effing Super Hornet as a loner because it can't be used to its full potential in Arena Commander. That loner will be around for the foreseeable future. Now, for some of my feelings and opinions. Its atmospheric flight speeds are off the charts. You can easily hit high 400s or possibly 500 meters per second in atmosphere. And lastly, it's only effective with two pilots. I personally think we need more ships like this in the verse to reward team gameplay. For cons, I would say it has a low missile count, although honestly, considering its weapon firepower, I think that's okay. It's not very nimble with the slow pitch, yaw, and roll. It also requires a lot of firepower and cooling. Running my PvP loadout, I was pushing my JS300 and dual zero rushes to their limits. Now for some major ones, that hull HP. Look, if you see your shields anywhere near close to being down, just get out of there. And lastly, because some of you may not agree with my last pro, one of its biggest cons is it requires a second player. I would not recommend going out on this ship solo. So what are my thoughts? I freaking love this ship. With the buffs added in 3.10, it makes this ship viable, but also not OP. If the pilot and turret gunner aren't coordinated, you will fail. There isn't much margin of error with such low hull HP, but once you reach that synergy, taking down opponents is a blast. The whole idea of this ship just brings me joy. Frankly, it takes time for two people to get coordinated in this game. Hey man, wanna fly around in my hurricane and wreck shit up? Sure, subliminal. Okay, where you at? I'm in Area 18. Well, I'm in Microtech. Okay, let's meet halfway. Sure, we'll meet at a rest stop. 20 minutes later. Where you at, bro? You rocking that agonizing Agni QT drive or something? I'm almost there, man, calm down. Sorry, I couldn't see your pit. Okay, I'm here. What pad you landing on? I don't know, there are no numbers. All right, I'll play elevator roulette then. That's the wrong one, man, but you're close. F it, I'll just EVA over. Okay, let's fly to Hurston and pick up some bounties. All right, I'm down, let's go. All right, let's see what bounties we got. I don't have any. I haven't done my Pro 10 bounty contract yet, have you? No, I haven't either. 
All right, well, let's go do it. Where's yours? Near Crusader. Mine too. Yeah. All right, let's head over there. <laughs> Mother Anybody who has patience enough to get through that shit deserves a slight advantage. I sincerely hope the turret on the Hurricane never gets slaved to the pilot like the Hornet. It would be way too much DPS and frankly it would ruin a really fun style of gameplay. If you're a lone wolf, you can't be effective in this ship. Just like you can't be effective if you hopped into a hammerhead by yourself. We need more small size multi-crew ships like this in the verse. Well, that's my rant. Let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the hurricane here. Don't forget, I'm live on Twitch right now. Like right now, come and hang out. We'll be discussing my loadout for the Anvil Hawk. If you enjoy my channel, there are six ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over at Displate and in the merch store. Number four, you can follow me on Twitch. I go live after almost every YouTube release. Twitch Prime subs help support the channel. You can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a channel member or even better, a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my Vessels of the Verse collection available to all patrons and channel members. If not, just sticking around to the end is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.